Thank you everyone for patiently waiting. Good afternoon and welcome to the Advancing Innovations in Science-Based Farm Production Systems, the role of state universities and colleges in modernizing, industrializing, and professionalizing the Philippine agriculture food systems online symposium. I am Marvin Suri of the DA Bureau of Agricultural Research, and I will be joining you all as your MC for today. So before we formally start the program, I would just like to acknowledge our participants coming from our state colleges, state universities and colleges, our beloved scientists, researchers, and technical staff working on SUCs, our government agencies engaged with SUCs, our DA key officials, DA TAG and SAGE, DA national agencies, DA regional offices, CHED, DOSP, and partners from NGAs and private sector groups from CAMP, Go Negosyo, PICAFI, and PSIA. And of course, everyone here, uh, thank you for participating and joining our symposium for today. So to formally start the program, uh, please settle down as we uh, have a brief invocation and the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Our Heavenly Father, the fount of all goodness and grace, the cause of wisdom, the source of intelligence, we welcome you, O Lord, to this auspicious gathering of your beloved, who continuously give you thanks for every opportunity to learn something new and become fruitful to the works of your creation. We humbly come to you, not because we are worthy, but because we find ourselves in need of you, who is our strength and our hope, to continue despite the challenges we face in health, prosperity, and our solidarity with one another. We pray that today's gathering made possible by the grace of advancements in technology and social media, become successful in its endeavors so we can offer it back to you as our humble offering to honor you, glorify you, and love you through our deeper connection with everyone. May we find bliss in today's session and become more productive children and co-creators of the earth. This we ask and pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Oh, my God. 
So to formally start the program, our honored guest for today first served as the Secretary of the Department of Agriculture in 1998. In his short stint, the agriculture sector registered an unprecedented growth of 9.8% despite the harsh El Nino, which today is still unmatched. After 21 years, he was once again called to serve the department and to elevate the Philippine agriculture with his new thinking approach and establish a food secure Philippines with prosperous farmers and fisher folk. Despite the numerous challenges, the sector remained afloat with the implementation of the Plant 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 program launched at the onset of the worldwide pandemic. In the coming months, the agriculture and fisheries sector will continue to grow, reboot, and survive under the 1DA holistic approach as the department pursues major programs and activities that will pave the way to attain a modest agriculture sector growth of 2.5%. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, our servant leader, DA Secretary William Manongwili Doliente Dar. A warm round of applause, please. Excellencies and distinguished participants in this event, Good day. The pandemic and other natural and man-made crises continue to wreak havoc on global health, economies, societies, and the environment, threatening to push more people into extreme poverty, chronic hunger, and malnutrition. These challenges place greater emphasis on the need for structural reforms and transformation of agriculture food systems. And the time to act is now. It is an imperative to enable our food production, logistics, and distribution systems to be more inclusive and resilient as well as sustainable. In September 2021, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, will convene a food system summit as part of the decade of action to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals by 2030. The summit will launch bold new actions to deliver progress on all 17 SDGs, each of which relies to some degree on healthier, more sustainable, and equitable food systems. In preparation for this event, several food system national dialogues and consultations have already been conducting in the country. These activities are important part of the decade of action to deliver the SDGs by helping to establish the future direction for food systems and to accelerate collective action to that end. The COVID-19 pandemic has shown the fragility and inequalities of our food system and underscored the urgency to make more sustainable, inclusive, and Resilient. As the country's national dialogues convener for the UN Food System Summit, I assure our commitment to pursue the development of national pathways towards sustainable agricultural food systems. To realize our goals, we must apply a whole of nation approach, wherein a diversity of stakeholders will be involved, including voices that are seldom heard, and provide an important opportunity for participants to debate, collaborate, and take action towards a better future. They give us the chance to connect, meet new partners, inspire, and be inspired. Thank you, and we look forward to the successful conduct 
of the National Food System Summit activities in the Philippines. Mabuhay tayong lahat. All right. Thank you for that wonderful message, Secretary Dar. Uh, before we proceed uh, with our program, let me just uh, give a few reminders to our participants. Please kindly mute your microphones to help keep background noise to a minimum and to prevent disruptions during the symposium. Thank you very much. Moving on, also here with us to deliver a key message is the Undersecretary for Policy and Planning of the Department of Agriculture, Yusek Rodolfo V. Vicera, to be represented by ASEC Noel Padre. Please ASEC, give a warm round of applause and welcome to ASEC Noel. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am representing Yusek Vicera today. Uh, to deliver his message. Uh, as, as the Secretary said earlier, uh, the UN will be conducting the 2021 UN Food System Summit in September 2021. And related to this, uh, the Philippines will be conducting its own National Food Security Summit uh, in preparation for this uh, initiative by the UN and uh, this activity uh, by the Department of Agriculture is one of a series of, uh, is one of the series of activities uh, that we are conducting uh, in partnership with the international and national offices uh, in preparation for this uh, national food security summit uh, uh, national dialogue it will be held next week and ultimately in preparation for the UNFSS uh, in September. And this webinar uh, on advancing uh, innovations in science-based uh, farm production systems uh, is one of these activities and we are conducting this uh, in partnership with, the, with you. Uh, the countries, state universities, and uh, colleges. Uh, this activity, I think, cuts across uh, the five uh, action tracks identified uh, to guide uh, discussions uh, towards the UN FSS in September. Uh, these are action track one, uh, access to safe and nutritious food for all. Action track two, uh, sustainable consumption. Uh, three, uh, nature positive production. Four, livelihoods and equality. And the fifth one, uh, boosting resilience to vulnerability. And uh, this uh, activity, uh, our ta the topic for this activity, I think, cuts across all the five action tracks. Uh, technologies and innovations. Uh, play a key role in achieving and realizing the department's goal to modernize, industrialize, and professionalize the agri and fishery sector. And one of the enablers in creating this, uh, uh, such technologies uh, is, of course, uh, the academe, uh, and particularly the state universities and colleges. And with the mandate of uh, mandate, uh, technical expertise and facilities, uh, in conducting research uh, for development and extension programs. Uh, the SUCs are major partners of the department in its pursuit through its strategies under the food security framework. So even under the Country and Fisheries Modernization Act, uh, the department, along with other government agencies, uh, are mandated to support and prioritize uh, research and technology initiatives, uh, tools and facilities, uh, and uh, facilities of SEUs for the latter to develop innovations. So the SEU, SUCs in the country have been partners uh, of the government uh, and the private sector in developing available tools uh, 
for in various segments uh, in the value chain, uh, such as, uh, for example, crop varieties, uh, animal breeds, uh, farm inputs, uh, and other technologies, including value-adding uh, food products. So providing these available opportunities for SUCs uh, adapting innovations in food systems, uh, it is important to provide a venue uh, for the SUCs to increase their awareness and strengthen their collaboration through possible partnerships with uh, the private sector. So uh, we are conducting this webinar for that. Uh, for this activity, uh, the objective is uh, for the webinar to inform the stakeholders uh, in the role of the SUCs in developing and providing available innovations and technologies uh, contributory to a sustainable and resilient food system. Specifically, uh, first, uh, uh, present the salient contributions of the SUCs on the agri and fishery sector. Uh, establish the roles of the SUCs in agri fishery sector strategies and the food systems framework. And three, initiate potential partnerships among the state universities, colleges, uh, the DA, and the private sector in pursuit to modernizing, uh, industrializing, and profit professionalizing the agriculture and fishery sector. So we hope to achieve these uh, objectives and uh, perhaps we can uh, uh, have a productive discussion to generate outputs like uh, listing of generated technologies and, and innovations of the state universities and colleges that are aligned to agricultural modernization, industrialization, and professionalization, and recommendations and agreements to further define the roles of the SUCs in the modernization, industrialization, and professionalization strategies, and to identify possible collaborations of the SUCs with the Department of Agriculture and the private sector. Uh, these outputs will, uh, as I said earlier, will be uh, treated as inputs to the national dialogue that will be conducted in preparation to the UN Food Security uh, Food Systems uh, Summit uh, in September. And we are expecting uh, to obtain uh, uh, these inputs uh, today. And so uh, we thank uh, the Bureau of Agricultural Research for uh, spearheading this activity together with the DA's Agriculture Dialogue and Information Network Group uh, Program Office, as well as our uh, resource speakers from the uh, SUCs, uh, led by the presidents of the uh, PASUC and ACAP as resource speakers during these activities. So I will stop here and uh, uh, I hope to have a productive uh, dialogue with you this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asik Noel, for that wonderful message. All right, so I know that everyone is very excited to start the program, so please allow me to introduce our first speaker for today's online symposium. So our first speaker is an academic leader and manager, an established researcher, an innovator, and an advocate of disaster risk management, and an ASEAN engineer, and also a full-fledged full professor. He, is, he has a master's degree in electronics engineering and a doctorate degree in management. He was appointed president of the Batanga State University in July 2014 and was unanimously reappointed for a second term in 2018. He is also a member of the Australasian Association for Engineering Education, American Society for Engineering Education, and Institute of Electrical and, and Electronics Engineers. He has been given numerous citations and awards in recognition of his exemplary performance and dedicated service in various areas of specialization. 
Some of these include being awarded as the country's most outstanding electronics engineer in the academe in 2013 and receiving the Presidential Award of Recognition and Outstanding Faculty of the Year in 2011 and 2005, respectively. Two of his most recent research projects have received nationwide recognition, the Tactical Operative Amphibious Innovation, which helps its te technology business incubator succeed by providing a supporting ecosystem that includes financing, mentoring, leadership development, and, and technology commercialization. He spearheaded the development and offering of 24 emerging academic programs in engineering and allied fields and establishment of the University Center for Transformative Learning. He also spearheaded the establishment, the Knowledge, Innovation, and Science Technology Park, the first techno park in the university, and is approved by the Philippine Economic Zone Authority, proclaimed by President Duterte a special economic zone. In July 2019, he was re-elected as president of the Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, thus leading all presidents of state-governed higher education institutions in the country in strategic planning and policy formulation. Ladies and gentlemen, our first speaker, Dr. Tirso A. Ronquillo. Uh, hello, good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yeah, yes, we can hear you very uh, loud and can clear. Hear you. I can hear yes, you. Yes, sir. Loud and okay, clear. Okay, thank sorry. you very much. Uh, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture, our friend and partner, mentor, uh, Secretary William Dar, all the under secretaries and assistant secretaries of the department, my beloved SUC presidents, uh, all throughout the country our partners from SUCs, faculty members, researchers, and all other stakeholders present this afternoon, uh, a pleasant day to all of us. Uh, today we are happy, SUCs are happy to join again with the Department of Agriculture in uh, this summit, a very timely summit, just to present and cite or describe the role of state universities and colleges in agri-modernization, professionalization, and industrialization in the Philippines. Uh, this presentation generally uh, contains agriculture and the sustainable development goals, agriculture in the Philippines, and role of issues in the Philippine agriculture. As highlighted by the earlier speakers, uh, the agriculture is really intertwined or uh, empowering all the sustainable development goals that the food systems technologies and innovation will be instrumental to achieving the sustainable development goals. Uh, the university, uh, the higher education's role in the SDGs, given this primary role as knowledge producer, higher education can serve as a powerful means to help create a more sustainable future. Thus, the concept of education for sustainable development has become in recent years one of the core educational initiatives to help address many of the problems associated with human development. Indeed, higher education's role in creating sustainable future future will presumably take on greater importance as the world continues to become increasingly globalized and interdependent. Uh, we, can, we can claim or we can say that agriculture is the common thread which holds the 17 SDGs together. 
uh, State Universities and Colleges is one uh, with the Department of Agriculture's vision to food secure and resilient Philippines. We believe that our state universities and colleges is strategically, strategically positioned in different regions of the Philippines are the front runner of uh, ensuring food security, uh, security all throughout the country together with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, the Philippines is considered an industrial powerhouse. We are envied as an industrial powerhouse and serve as a manufacturing hub for many products from consumer goods to medical products, cement, textile and fertilizers, as well as steel for shipbuilding. We are considered an agricultural country and the Philippines is in the best position to have an agriculture driven economy. We know and we believe that more must be done really to make Philippines an agriculturally developed country. We are considered agricultural country and recently uh, industry or uh, agro-industrial country. So the government, including SUCs, must be really boosting that uh, tag to the Philippines as an agricultural country by forwarding a number of programs or even actively participating in all programs and projects of the government. Just to share with you our uh, SUC's uh, capability or SUC's profile, we have 114 SUC's all over the country, including 434 satellite campuses. And out of this, more than 80 of our SUC's are offering agriculture or agriculture-related programs. We have uh, more or less 1.3 million students enrolled in different uh, 114 SUCs, uh, being uh, uh, molded by 74,000 permanent and temporary faculty and non teaching staff. We are also administratively supported by 34,000 job order and contract of service workers, including part time faculty. We are happy and uh, proud to be able to produce. 250,000 graduates annually on the average rates. So that is the power of our issues is to support the Department of Agriculture in really boosting, boosting agriculture in the country to ensure food security. Uh, higher education institutions in the Philippines, especially SUCs, play a key role to the needed transformative change in the Philippine agricultural food systems. Now, uh, why? SUCs strive to undertake better research, improve their teaching and support enhanced extension services in order to provide a more effective response to the many environmental and agriculture and development related concerns in the country, as it is uh, mandated that SUCs be uh, uh, able to produce new knowledge by way of doing research and that new knowledge be extended to our communities. SUCs are adjusting their programs, accommodate new topics as well as teaching and learning models towards new partnerships with stakeholders. Their extension services, mostly agriculture, include support to education for agricultural sector that encompasses all levels of education. Agricultural issues research, development and linkages aims to become or to be community-based response to rural and urban agricultural problems. Out of more than 80 issues in the entire countries, we do a lot of research in agriculture, though there are other fields such as engineering, technology, IT, and even tourism, but most of the research being conducted by our issues are concentrated or focus on agriculture. After my talk, uh, President Tulin, the ACA president, will be presenting the details of programs, activities, and projects being undertaken by our respective SUCs all throughout the country. Now, uh, as to the enrollment of our SUCs, 
agriculture in the agriculture forestry and fishery this is as per chad data 2019-2020 academic year we have 107,337 students enrolled in these uh, programs agriculture forestry and fisheries how about our graduates almost annually we were able to produce uh, on the average uh, 25,149 from our uh, SUC, agricultural SUCs in the country. Uh, re recently, I think two years ago, PASO, uh, in the pursuit of ensuring that the intellectual capital of Philippine SUCs effectively serve as pipelines for technological innovation, economic competitiveness, and inclusive growth in the knowledge economy and Industry 4.0, a PASO engineered the platform for innovating SUCs for Industry 4.0, shortly PC or PISI, in partnership with USAID Stride, Philippine Development Foundation, and Singapore Polytechnic. This platform for innovating SUCs for Industry 4.0 basically consists of four strands. The first strand is on innovation diagnostic of state universities and colleges. This is all about determining the readiness of our SUCs to participate in innovation and industrialization. By way of uh, determining or uh, looking at the diagnostics, we look into the readiness of our human resource, readiness of our programs, readiness of our infrastructure, so that we can participate in this in industry 4.0 which includes modernization in agriculture second pillar of, of that PISI program or PC program is on innovation capital development we believe that uh, all our SUC uh, stakeholders president vice president faculty staff research they are all considered innovation capital they are all innovation actors, and we also propose innovation capital development, really, for them to actively participate in establishing innovation ecosystem. Third strand is on in inclusive innovation partnership and collaboration. We believe that uh, we, as you see, should collaborate, should partner with each other, so that we can be able to to create a more dynamic innovation ecosystem that gone were the days that SUCs or even stakeholders, whether private or government, work in silos. Now we should synergize. We believe in synergy. We believe in collaboration. That in collaboration, we believe we can do more. The fourth strand of that program is on uh, inclusive innovation ecosystem. That there has to be an inclusive innovation ecosystem in our universities, in our system, in our campuses, so that we will be able to contribute to a nationwide innovation ecosystem. There are a lot of programs being put into the pipeline by our SUCs in building this innovation ecosystem by way of introducing programs, even curricular uh, programs, even research, even establishing technology business incubators or center for technology and innovation, or even establishing technology parks. A number of our SUCs are now uh, developing their idle lands so that it can be further developed into agro-industrial park or even science park or even IT park so that we will be able to establish a wider, a bigger, inclusive innovation ecosystem. This includes even, we believe, that the spillover of these technologies, of this innovation uh, ecosystem, are more uh, directed research or programs on agriculture. Uh, a number of our uh, SUCs already have uh, received training or are beneficiaries of training 
from uh, uh, different uh, uh, partners that we have, specifically from Stride and even from uh, partners in Taiwan and in Singapore. Now, uh, with, with the many concerns of governments, we believe that all government agencies, all government institutions have different concerns, have different constraints and limitations. And we always point it out to budget that is common uh, challenge to all of us. But, but giving the necessary financial support to HUCs, we believe it will help produce a workforce that will support our industries and companies, which in turn propel the country to inclusive growth and global competitiveness. Uh, we are all familiar with uh, the Republic Act 8435 the Agricultural Modernization, uh, uh, Agricultural Modernization Act, which uh, includes, among others, uh, the research and technology infrastructure funding for SUCs. That really, this highlights the participation of SUCs for research and technology infrastructure building. Also, that uh, Republic Act, that AFMA, highlighted the identification of post-harvest and uh, even continuing agriculture and uh, fisheries. Also, uh, that highlights scholarship programs, but as you may know, you know the uh, promulgation or the implementation of Republic Act 10931 provides a democratized access, not only for agriculture uh, students, but even to students from other disciplines. But as we all know, the government provided a lot of funds to support our students and even universities as a whole in agriculture. Uh, that agricultural modernization also includes, among others, a uh, provision for state universities and colleges uh, to focus on the development of the capability of LGU extension service. That uh, SUCs, our SUCs we know, have a lot of programs that supports the capability building of our LGUs. And we know that uh, our SUCs are very active on that. <clears throat> the uh, National Agriculture and Fisheries Education System is very familiar among our SUCs as uh, is prohibited by the Commission on Higher Education. The Chet Memorandum Order Number 18 and 32 Series of 29 or 2009 and Chet Memorandum Order Number 25 Series of 2010. This uh, mandates National University and College of Agriculture and Fisheries and 84 Provincial Institute of Agriculture and Fisheries uh, for this program. Now, uh, what are the uh, ways that we can explore uh, moving forward? We believe that we need to strengthen collaboration and long-term partnership between Department of Agriculture, private sectors, and SUCs. And this summit, this forum, I think is strategic to achieve this uh, goal. So we need more summit, we need more discussion, we need more platform so that we can share ideas, we can share programs even, we can share information on how we can move forward. Programs and projects co-creation. We are thankful that uh, the Department of Agriculture recently has a lot of programs that is being uh, are being implemented with state universities and colleges. Uh, even infrastructure support and development for agriculture, forestry, and fisheries uh, colleges. Because if we really believe that uh, we need to secure food, we need to ensure food security, we have to invest more. We have to invest in our SUC to boost our capability. We need to invest on infrastructure. We need to invest in programs on research. We need to uh, invest on uh, human capital development. So. These are the ways forward that I think all of us stakeholders should uh, really espouse together. That this should be a whole of the nation approach. That SUCs cannot, cannot do it alone. 
one department cannot do it alone. But if we come together, we are certain that food security can be a certain. So thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, po, Dr. Ronquillo, for that very comprehensive presentation about uh, the role that the, our state universities and colleges play uh, in the Philippine agriculture food systems uh, sector. So I know that you have uh, a lot of questions in mind. So if you mind, uh, we are just requesting you to park those questions for now because we will save them for later. Uh, when we have our open forum, so but you you can you can now start uh, chatting those questions uh, through the chat box here via Webex, or if you are watching through Facebook, you may also comment it in the comment section. So let's move on to our next speaker. Allow me to introduce our next speaker. Is the current president of the Visaya State University, and at the same time the president of State. Universities and Colleges Association of Colleges of Agriculture. He is the 2018 DOSD Outstanding Research Administrator Awardee by the National Academy of Science and Technology. He is also a Presidential Lincoln Bayan Awardee in 2014, accorded by the Civil Service Commission. In 2009, he was given the Best Mentor in Health Research Award by the Philippine National Health Research System. He obtained his BS degree in agriculture, major in agricultural chemistry at VS VSU, then Visayas State College of Agriculture. He earned a Master of Science degree in biochemical engineering from the University of London and a PhD degree in biotechnology from Nagoya University, Japan. Becoming the sixth VSU president, he served as the vice president for planning and resource before Becoming the sixth VSU president, he served as the vice president for planning and resource generation for five years and the vice president for instruction for more than a year. In 2016, he was elected as the president of the Asian Association of Agricultural Colleges and Universities. As president of VSU, he leads in the quest to become a globally innovative and competitive university. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker is Dr. Edgardo E. Tulin. Please give him a round of applause. Thank you. Good afternoon po sa lahat. To our secretary, Dr. William Dar, our assistant secretaries and uh, undersecretaries, Director Choi Mamaril of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Resources, and the technical staff of the IMR. Hello, sir. Yes, our soup presidents. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Um, yes, sir. Okay, okay. Our soup presidents are attending this webinar, President Terso Cruz, uh, Terso Ronquillo, our PASO president, the other stakeholders, and everyone listening to this uh, very important activity. Again, good afternoon. So my presentation focuses on the role of SUK ACAP in agri-modernization, industrialization, and professionalization. So let me outline, uh, let me present to you the outline of my talk. Next, please. Okay, I'll give you a brief background of uh, what SUK ACAP is about to contextualize my presentation this afternoon. Then the ongoing partnership partnerships of SUCs with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, we present some of the projects that are implemented and technologies that are actually commercialized and developed by ACAP member institutions. And then we go into the role of SUC ACAP in the, uh, what we are having today, agri-modernization, industrialization, and professionalization. And then the current and upcoming SUC ACAP projects or engagements and then I'll talk a little about convergence with the industry or private sector. So SUK ACAP actually was established uh, in 1962 with Juscoro El Umali, Dr. Juscoro El Umali as the first president. And uh, now this is an association composed of uh, 74 member institutions 
uh, from uh, both public and private, but mainly are actually coming from our uh, SOOCs, from uh, PASOC member institutions. So the primary aim of this association is to ensure a more relevant and functional operation for our colleges, offering agriculture program, particularly in response to the local and global demands affecting the educational system. Next, please. So the present executive board of SUC ACAP uh, are actually coming from uh, BSU as the sitting president. Then we have the vice president for Luzon, uh, President uh, Soriano of Pampanga State Agricultural University. Then we have, uh, we have distributed our vice presidents in three uh, regions or clusters. We have the vice president for the Visayas uh, Doctor of Southern Leyte State University, President uh, Yepes, and then President Garcia of USM. And then we have the other as our representatives of the other committee members, uh, very distinct committees. And uh, okay, the objectives, of course, of this association are the following, to consider the common goals and problems pertaining to the promotion of our effective programs in instruction, research, extension, and production in agriculture, to formulate or promulgate plans and policies and programs, as well as enable the member institutions to achieve these goals. This is actually the mentoring part. And then to explore ways and means which member institutions can help each other and contribute more effectively to the socioeconomic advancement of the people. Okay, next. So, of course, uh, SUC ACAP strongly supports and promotes the Department of Agricultural Programs. So, it is very clear in our mandate that we support and promote the Department of Agricultural Programs. Okay, so let me have the following partnerships of our SUCs with the Department of Agriculture. So, in here, uh, we have, uh, I have listed uh, some of the technologies, some of the mature technologies of some of our state universities and colleges, which are member of SUC ACAP. And you can see that these are actually ongoing technologies, or mature technologies that have been uh, picked up or uh, taken up by our industry, some of them, and the others are actually uh, already under negotiation. For example, in Akran State University, we have the tissue culture of Aklan Piña, and we know that uh, that region there is actually famous for piña cloth. And they also have the technology on the natural dye extraction and application technology on fibers and cloth. And then the next one, we have uh, Ikagayan State University. Uh, they have the bamboo production technology and the production of organic pineapple vinegar. And this is a very important technology, especially for bamboo which we are promoting at present, and as well as uh, the organic pineapple vinegar part of their uh, promotion for organic or natural uh, uh, materials. Next. Also from Cagayan State University, they have developed a number of machineries, like the mechanical peanut pod stripper, comb sorter, and then the peanut sheller or sorter, and then the peanut bulk storage system. So this is a technology generated. I think this is a mature technology from Cagayan State. And I think these are already picked up by industries for use by our private companies or, private, or the industry. And then the next university, we have uh, the Kamigin Polytechnic State College. Uh, they have the natural farming technology and also technologies related to the production of indigenous feeds and indigenous food crops. So you see, uh, as I will uh, show you later on, these are the contributions of our DA partnerships with the uh, state universities and colleges. So next we have the, uh, next please, Kapi State University. So Kapi State University, we have the Kalamansi Juice Extractor. And uh, this is already being taken up by uh, a private investor, St. Joseph Food Products of uh, Roja City. And this is a patented technology developed and uh, 
uh, supported by the uh, Department of Agriculture and the corresponding programs. No? And then uh, we also have other technologies from CAPIS. Next, please. Uh, the Coco Fiber Twinning Machine. So this is also a technology which is also very important in the utilization of Coco Fiber. And we know how this is very important as a material, a natural source of material for uh, a number of uses in the uh, industry, in our disaster mitigation, in the other sorts of applications. And uh, also next from Kapi State University, we have the ginger processing technologies, which are also being taken up by a number of cooperators. Uh, we have the Orange Ladies Organization of Barangay Bayugan, Roja City, Capis, who is actually uh, taking up this technology as, a, as their industry. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, we have another one. Oh, no. For Karaga State University, uh, the, the, the technologies that are being developed by this university include the following. They have developed the web applications and database for enhanced production and risk management in Agriculture Integrated Decision Support System, or IPRIMA. And then we have also the Integrated GIS Mapping and Database Registry and Management System for both existing and potential Philippine aquaculture areas, or AQUAR. And uh, number three, they have also developed mitigating greenhouses, gases in livestock through different feeding formula, method and practices for efficient cattle production, as well as a, an addition, additional technology on Karaga black native chicken through selection and breeding, which is actually a potential niche product of the Karaga region. Also, uh, I think these are very significant technologies from the Karaga State, from Karaga State University. From Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, we have uh, the Stingless Bee-based food and cosmetic products, the highly innovative cosmetic products from Stingless Bee. I think they have developed the propolis spray and the cream. Uh, and I think they have also manufactured the cream from the Stingless Bee, uh, from Stingless Bee. Aside from that, uh, food products like uh, macaroons, polvoron, and then, uh, uh, and in addition, they also have the bath soap and other hand sanitizers, so on and so forth. Number two, uh, next please, we have, uh, well, if Bicol is known for Gabi or Taro, they have also uh, developed and now commercializing the dryer for Taro leaves and as well as characterization of Taro cultivars that are very, uh, appropriate or uh, significant for, for their delicacy or their main uh, popular dish, no? And uh, I think uh, it's appropriate that they have a collection also of taro cultivars in response or in support of their uh, favorite uh, uh, dish in the Bicol area. And then they also have number three, uh, the vetiver grass as handicraft material. Now, this is the first time that I come across uh, using vetiver grass as a handicraft material. And uh, I think it's commendable that the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture is able to make this product an alternative source of livelihood from vetiver grass. So in addition to its uh, use as a feed ingredient, I think it can also be used as a handicraft material. Good innovation. Next one. Uh, from Isabella State University in the north, uh, of course, they have developed the cacao products. Uh, this is also, uh, this is a highly innovative uh, product also from uh, uh, cacao. Uh, uh, value addition of our native or traditional tablea. And uh, these are also highly popularized now. And in fact, some of these products are already, I think, uh, imported, exported, no? Very good products from Isabella State University. And then aside from that, uh, the next one, Isabella State University also have other products like the 
uh, development of a non-invasive pregnancy detection kit for goats, so for livestock. So if you see that, uh, you know, uh, they must have uh, uh, taken this as a very important uh, technology to detect uh, uh, goats for breeding and also for uh, production. And they have the Can Chevon, which is also of export quality. And they have a good semen processing so system using soybean lecithin as the base extender and uh, peanut sheller as well as a cassava cheaper with tumbler. So these are the, the machinery part of that, uh, the, the technologies that were generated from Isabella State University. Uh, next one, uh, the Mariano Marcos State University uh, also based agricultural products. We have varieties of garlic, the Insect 2017 or the MMSU gem. And then we have the glutinous corn, the Insect 2018 uh, from MMSU. Then we have the, also the Pigeon P also from MMSU, the Insect ICP 735 as well as the other varieties or the other yeah, other varieties, agricultural commodities that have been uh, developed. And uh, MMSU has uh, let this approved by the National Industry Council. No? And these were actually through a series and long time research of the research personnel or uh, research arm of Mariano Marcos State University. So the next one we also have uh, from the Mountain Province State Polytechnic College, the MPSPC compost, a uh, cataloging of the heirloom rice in the Mountain Province and botanical insecticide and the integrated crop management in response to climate change impact in the Mountain Province. Uh, next one we have the from Blonde State University, the fabrication and commercialization of tiger grass pollen remover. And it's also the first time that I come across this innovative technology. You see, uh, they actually make uh, brooms. And so they have to remove the pollen from the materials in making the broom. So that's why they developed and commercialized this so-called grass pollen remover. So that when you buy the broom, and then these are being used in households. They are now freed from the, the pollen, which cause allergic reactions. And we also have bamboo connectors. So, yeah. Uh, there are still, of course, there are other universities that have technologies, but uh, uh, in the interest of uh, some of the submissions that were not handed on time, and also because of the, the short notice, we were not able to get hold of the many technologies that our SOOCs, our 74 SOOCs are doing, are making, are producing. And in fact, many of them are already commercialized. So anyhow, it's, it's very good. I think uh, I have to fabricate all these things. I, I have to uh, uh, document all these things and maybe make some uh, uh, handbook out of these technologies so that our industry takers can uh, maybe use this as a reference material. Okay, the next one, I think, uh, okay, next please. Okay, not to be missed from my university. Uh, of course, I will present here our uh, vacuum fried jackfruit, uh, also the uh, dehydrated jackfruit. We have technologies for that Taro swine. This is actually from Taro or Gabi. Next. Then uh, we have commercialized uh, and uh, the Macapuno Biscotti is a product actually from our Macapuno. And then cookies and chippy from root crops from cassava and sweet potato. These are already uh, ready for commercialization. In fact, some are actually being commercialized and sold in the market, although at a limited uh, capacity. Next one, please. Uh, and then, of course, our kamoti chips, cookies, uh, cocoa cookies, kapono strips, and makapono mango jam. Next. Uh, and then do we have also technologies for tissue culture of the green pineapple, and then the coconut tissue culture lab, the bamboo tissue culture, abaca power stripper, and the plant power shredder, to name a few of these technologies. And so uh, 
I'm sure there are, again, as I said, there are other technologies that are actually uh, mature from our state universities and colleges. Next one, please. So the role of Suk Akap in the, okay, let me present now, next one. So these are some of the, I would like to focus on what we are doing and what has the association been doing with regards to our role in the professionalizing and modernizing our uh, agriculture and agriculture graduates and the agriculture procession, professions. So we ensure that the agriculture faculty in all SUK ACAP member institutions are capacitated or trained to be able to educate further our agriculture students. And then we initiate programs and projects that will assist or support our agriculture students or graduates to venture in agripreneurship so that they can apply agri-modernization techniques. And you will see later on uh, what, uh, what we are doing on the ground. And we link and coordinate with various agencies and support their projects that will benefit the College of Agriculture, Colleges of Agriculture in all member institutions, as well as their agriculture students. Okay, next. And then we assist, initiate, and convene proposal writing, especially for the SUK ACAP member institutions, a project that will also benefit other institutions which are assisted by the uh, SUK ACAP uh, institutions which are not yet COE or COD. And then we endorse or support the proposal to CHED NAFES or NUCA for possible funding. So these were the, the five uh, primary uh, things or uh, initiatives or goals that ACUP are actually doing. Okay, next one. Uh, so uh, this is actually during the 2019 SUK ACAP Biennial Convention, Convention in VSU with the attendance of uh, the CHED Chair Popoy de Vera, is our guest speaker. And we had this one, it's actually a big gathering of all SUK uh, member institutions in the university. And that was also the time where we had actually a very big uh, uh, project on uh, all aspects of uh, the previously uh, defined uh, goals or objectives of SUK ACAP. Next, please. Uh, we forge linkages or partnerships with the members of the Southeast Asian University Consortium for Graduate Education in Agriculture and Natural Resources, or the so-called UC. Uh, this is to facilitate academic exchange and mobility of our students and research and teaching staff, and then to share best practices and participate in meetings from the UC member consortium, uh, UC member institutions, and then to connect these members to the UC member institutions. So this uh, university consortium is actually composed of key universities from the Asian region. Uh, and so uh, we try to, uh, as part of our activity, uh, we try to link uh, some of our SUP member institutions. In fact, uh, uh, we are doing some activities now actually to capacitate our faculty as well as to let our students uh, engage in these universities. Next, please. And then uh, we forge also linkage or partnership with the Philippine Association of Agriculturists or PAA. And this is to streamline our programs or projects and objectives to the two organizations to have meaningful and unified direction and greater strength in pushing for our programs and advocacy for national development. And then we share also information and actively engage in conferences or fora, dialogues and conversations related to agricultural issues, concerns and directions, and we support each organization in the, our efforts to upgrade the capabilities of the faculty, professionals and students. So in fact, uh, uh, we have a standing collaboration now with PAA and uh, SUK ACAP and also UPLB in the, helping our students in the, the licensure examination for agriculture. Next, please. So, so here are the following engagements that we are doing actively uh, with the other partners. Next. Uh, okay, we SUK ACAP spearheaded in the participation of our Filipino students in the agro studies 
internship program in Israel. So this is a program that provides a unique partnership or apprenticeship that focuses on capacity building of students in agriculture. So uh, in a way, it promotes food security by empowering our students through a creative, dynamic, multicultural program that involves both academic studies and learning by doing or gaining real hands on experience in the field. Next one. And the advantages of the Agri Studies program, most of the universities foster internationalization to encourage linkages and exchange of diverse knowledge and cultures among students and faculty. And uh, with the idea that uh, the knowledge, the skills that they obtain from Israel uh, will uh, be uh, brought back to our country and uh, either they initiate or uh, make a, a venture of their own or establish or make uh, improvements and in, uh, introduce some of those modern technologies back to our country for to improve our agricultural food systems or agricultural systems. So really the students get the chance to work real uh, hands-on experience with advanced farming technologies and techniques in Israel. Next one. Uh, the program also helps produce globally competitive graduates with entrepreneurial skills, provides a window of awareness and understanding how problems and challenges in crop production and agriculture in general. And uh, the graduates also of the Agro Studies program serve as catalysts of agricultural development in their respective communities. So I think uh, this is these are the goals that uh, uh, our Agro Studies program actually hope to accomplish. Uh, next one. So uh, we convened uh, one time uh, before the COVID. Uh, we convened our Agro Studies coordinators to really uh, consult them on the progress and status of our Agro Studies program. Of course, there were issues and concerns of our students and our coordinators, and we tried to uh, address them uh, so that uh, many of these concerns can be actually uh, addressed and uh, taken care of by the host university or host uh, uh, organization in Israel, as well as our universities here sending our students to Israel. So next one. So for example, in the 2019, before COVID, we had a total of 599 students, 529 male and 73 female who were sent to Israel uh, from 30 different uh, SUP member institutions as actually enumerated here. Sorry, this is too small to be accommodated, but uh, just uh, to give you the figure, uh, there were nearly 600 students sent to Israel. And you have to imagine that uh, when COVID broke in 2020, uh, we had to send all these students back to the Philippines. So you imagine the logistics that we had to face during the, the early part of 2020 when we had that COVID, no? So we had to, to bring all these students back to the Philippines. So thanks, of course, to uh, of course, to uh, Tarlac State, Tarlac Agricultural University, to Dr. Mercado, and uh, of course uh, to Ched, uh, who were very uh, uh, instrumental, to Ched, uh, Chair Popo de Vera, and the others who were really very uh, supportive on the, the bringing back all the students to our country. You know? Those were just uh, one of the setbacks in sending our students uh, because of that pandemic. Okay, next. Uh, we have a capability, capability enhancement and online training program among our SOOCs faculty for agriculture and fisheries and agriculture related disciplines. This is uh, in collaboration uh, thanks to UPLB. Uh, which is actually to capacitate our agriculture faculty uh, for the layer review classes. So we are still doing this now in progress. 
and uh, uh, the reason here is uh, the idea here is uh, uh, for our agriculture faculty to be uh, capacitated once again and re uh, using uh, course uh, shared experiences with that of the UPLB experts and other experts in the field of agriculture and its uh, subclusters. And uh, we actually did this uh, during uh, the last year, no? during last year when COVID was uh, uh, during the, air, the time of uh, the COVID uh, area. And then the other uh, activity that we have and we are still doing, next please, is actually on the, uh, our students, next one. Uh, this is still part, okay. The, our SUK ACAP initiated online layer review classes. So this is uh, as a way of helping uh, uh, professionalizing our students in agriculture. Uh, our experience or our experience shows that the passing percentage of our BSA agriculture students uh, still remain low. Uh, so SUK ACAP, uh, especially in the COVID times, initiated an online review classes to help our agriculture graduates uh, to pass the examination. And this is actually an ACAP UPLB collaboration. Uh, we, with the help of uh, UPLB and the UP Open University, uh, we harmonized our review materials. No? Of course, we have observed that UPLB has nearly 100% passing in the licensure examination. So who else would uh, better help us to uh, harmonize our review materials than, than them? So uh, taking advantage of this and of course, with the strong support of uh, UPLB with the then Chancellor Sanchez and now Chancellor Camacho, uh, we are actually almost in our preparations for harmonizing and hopefully by August, we will start our online review until October. Uh, of course, with our president uh, 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 of PAA uh, also helping us organize and very instrumental in uh, putting all this together. Next. Uh, so this is the online review preparation meeting. Of course, along the way, we have a lot of concerns and issues, but we are doing this uh, and we are making sure that all these arrangements are actually helping our students uh, and our SOCs obtain a higher percentage passing for the licensure examination. At the same time, to capacitate them on the, the six areas of uh, the specializations of agriculture that are contained in our layer. Okay, next one. Uh, so we are also having a collaboration with uh, CRCA, of course, as I mentioned earlier, and this is also a capacity building project with CRCA and SUK ACAP. So we are also undergoing this training now. In fact, a number of our faculty members and graduate students are participating in a capability assist, uh, capability building or training on six areas uh, like, uh, uh, of course, to improve the capacity of our teachers, uh, enrichment, of course, and also with our graduate students. And th this is going on until next year. And thanks, of course, to Siarka with uh, Director Gregorio at his head. Next, please. And uh, yeah, this is the objective is to raise the standard of Philippine higher education in agriculture, fisheries and natural resources towards enhanced relevance and competitiveness in the 21st century. Okay, next one, please. And uh, just recently, uh, we are developing with USEC uh, Medrano uh, as the uh, uh, front runner of a university student agripreneurship development program or USAD. Uh, this is a DA CHED ACAP convergence initiative. This is still in proposal stage, and uh, we're actually doing this uh, for the SUK member institutions uh, in the hope of uh, actually uh, uh, enticing or helping our students agriculture students to become entrepreneurs 
or become really engaged in agriculture related discipline entrepreneurship and uh, start up business for agriculture so this is uh, what this program is about so uh, in other words what we are doing here is actually in the beginning uh, top or uh, uh, to to award 50 member institutions of suk akap uh, give them provide them seed capital uh, for our students to actually undertake a project on agriculture be it production enterprising or processing so on and so forth to uh, raise the level of awareness of our student but at the same time uh, have them uh, uh, have hands-on experience for in, in the agriculture and uh, doing business uh, in the agriculture area so this is supposed to be a self-sustaining uh, initiative of uh, DHH and ACAP, and hopefully uh, many of our students will undergo this program on the premise which I, we will negotiate actually that this will be a part of the requirements in lieu of their internship or their uh, student thesis program in the, as a requirement in the university. Okay, next one. Okay, now, uh, for ways forward, uh, the, I, I put here uh, two slides uh, for the convergence of our activities with the private sector. Now, uh, I think these, uh, these two are very important slides, but we have actually a mechanism now in the university and uh, I think these are uh, being already done by our universities uh, across the country. Uh, we are, of course, we have a mechanism for partnership for technology transfer and subsequent commercialization. Uh, the universities are open actually for uh, commercializing the products uh, that are mature in the university. Of course, uh, this is very important so that our technologies can be transferred to the industry, to the private sector. We conduct Technophora and Technology Summit uh, uh, to sell our technologies to the private or to the industry. And we also have the Farmers and Fisher Folks Day or week in order to highlight the mature and technologies that are up for uh, our private sectors or for our industry. We have, uh, many of our universities have well-defined intellectual property and protection office uh, uh, to make all these uh, formalities and to make all these arrangements uh, uh, on hand. And then, of course, technology business incubation in partnership with the SOCs. Some of our bigger SOCs have DBIs already in place. Uh, they have already a number of technology business incubators on hand. And uh, I think uh, many of them uh, already have matured or graduated incubators that are already in the market. And of course, as part of our mandate, we have extension offices in our SOOCs for technical assistance and uh, DOSTs also have niche centers established in SOOCs and many of these niche centers are actually also agricultural based and uh, technologies can also be found in the, uh, these SOOCs. Next one. And uh, of course, uh, the other one is uh, that we are implementing in some of our programs for agriculture is we are integrating entrepreneurship into our curriculum. It may not be one course or one subject matter, but actually uh, uh, for agribusiness, for example, of course, this is uh, a, a course, but in some other areas, we try to, to make entrepreneurship as part or be integrated in the, our curriculum so that uh, our students can also be aware of this one. And uh, if I may, uh, the last uh, bullet, uh, my observation until this time, uh, from my own personal point of view, is that uh, uh, our universities, unlike other countries, like the US, for example, uh, there is really a long history of uh, uh, tradition in the U.S. that uh, the universities and industry are closely actually tied up. Uh, in the Philippines, I don't think that is the case because uh, our nature, 
uh, industries uh, there when uh, and so it, it, it's, it's really something that we have to work on no? and uh, whereas if there is really a close uh, also for example in Japan uh, many of the industries are actually putting their men into the the universities for technology development I think this is a good setup and uh, an innovation institute uh, to promote public private collaboration on translational research would also to offer assistance for startups would also be very good i think as a part of a strategy perhaps in our and we may call it in some other names but the point is uh, i think we really need also very big investment for industry i think this is the last slide and uh, i think i did uh, thank you very much for your attention Thank you so much, Paul, Dr. Tulin. Uh, that was a very informative and comprehensive presentation as well. So uh, moving forward, uh, we will now be opening the floor for questions from our participants. So you may use the chat box if you are with us here via the WebEx app, or if you are watching through Facebook, you may also use the comment section there to leave your to your to leave your questions for Dr. Ronquil, for Dr. Ronquillo and Dr. Tuning. Thank you. Marvin, uh, there are already questions in the chat box. Uh, can someone please filter this out? Yes. Okay. Sir. okay. So, for example, the one, the last. Uh, okay. So, from Mr. Gas Molina, what kind of technologies SUCs are patenting? The kind of research outputs I have seen so far, patenting would only hinder the scaling out to farmers. So, this is now a the wisdom about patents. Uh, we don't know whether uh, President Ronquillo or Tuli will answer the question. Uh, okay. Uh for patents, actually, uh, many of the universities, if not all universities, have actually that so-called intellectual property office or the, the ITSU now. They're in charge of the intellectual properties and also they're in charge of all the patenting of the technologies in the university. We applied for patents and then these are granted to the universities and then, then uh, arrangements can be made directly to the university owning this patent. No? And there are provisions in our intellectual property book as to the you know, sharing and all these things between the university and the student. So these are the kind of things that are present in our intellectual property handbook. So each university has said, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, maybe different versions of the patent. All of these are approved by our respective board of regents. No? Uh, there's another comment from a from a, one of our members of the bar tag family. Sabi niya ay, day offices for better are for d linkages with possible funding and synergy of relevant agri aqua initiatives. Strengthen the agri business incubation centers for very promising uh, agri business technologies. Perhaps with the inclusion of DTI, aside from DA and DOST. Yan po yung comment niya. Yes, uh, I think that is a very good comment, no? I think DTI should also be part of that promotion for that for, for the industry, no? Uh, uh, in the present setup, of course, DTI is also involved in our, but uh, I think uh, it really mood, needs more engagement with DTI when it comes to really commercializing or uh, how this industry, the, the private sector will move into full commercialization. Mm. That, that's a, that's was, oh, sorry. Okay, another comment from Mr. Art Baria. I know uh, Mr. Art Baria was a former um, researcher from the field, from Phil Rice, sabi niya, I believe there are lots of studies and projects done by SUCs and partners the challenge is doing R4D and ensuring that before starting any such activity, the assumption is that an industry off-taker should already be part of the endeavor beforehand. 
with this, in R4D investment should have immediate ROI. My other concern, if we really want to ensure ROI, how much of DA bar R&D investment have been translated into actual technology adapted by the industry and consumers, farmers, skills rich? I would like to answer from the part of bar. Meron naman, uh, we have some, but in terms of numbers, how many they are, extent, uh, that is really a very good question that we don't have answered at the moment, Art. Pero mm -hmm. siguro it's good to look at, ano, baka naman ito ay isang wake-up call para sa bar kung makikita namin kung masasagot namin yung tanong mo. Siguro we'll do, uh, we'll commission something on this para malaman namin kung ano na nangyari sa investment sa bar from the time right. na ito ay ginawa o kung meron mang, ano mang available data sa Art. Uh, this may be a wake-up call for us. Thank you, Art. But, but again, this is this question now or comment from Sir Art Maria on. Um, yeah, pero mo nang taker bago gawin yung R4D. Yes, may I ano, may I just uh, make some comment also. I think the the first statement was actually that's 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 the ideal, no? That's the ideal because uh, that's that's true. For any technology to be de to be developed, uh, we must have already a a the taker in mind. That's an ideal setup, but what happens now in our universities is actually, siguro part of our uh, academic uh, uh, responsibility is actually also our own share of uh, uh, research. No, but uh, we we must understand also that uh, uh, the industry. I mean, in in other countries. For example, I'm not sure if that is not really applied here in the Philippines. The industry is always in close and with the universities. That's why the university know what technology in the industry needs. No, in other words, uh, there is really a close association. Although we claim now, that's my personal assessment, huh? Although we claim now that the industry is there with us, but uh, along the planning, perhaps or. I'm not. I'm not really sure if the industry is really involved in terms of really what's what's real on the ground. Mm. Mm. Okay. So, thank you. I'm oh, sorry. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, from Mr. Gas Molina, sabi niya, rewards for university researchers are very much based on technical publications and reports to donors. Then, R4D should aim use and impact by the next user. Um, to, to, to sir, ano, uh, for you to become an academician or a scientist, talagang yung publication po lagi ang tinitingnan. Um, yes. Siguro usapin din, ang, siguro another usapin nito on matters of, <laughs> ano nangyari kasi na publish mo? Uh, ang ganda-ganda, technically good. Yung, so sabi niya, eh, eh yung impact. Um, ah, ang ganda na lang ako, Sir Gas. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, maybe I can give a short comment on Thank that. Thank you, sir. While our uh, previous uh, matrices being adapted really put premium more on publication, now the evaluation also changes this time that we are giving points even on patent. We are giving points on uh, uh, industrial designs, even utility model. But there are some realities on the ground. Uh, since it's difficult to patent, faculties are very clever. They will just even make two or three publications easier than one patent. After all, when you add the points, it's even more than a patent, let's say. For a patent, it's, let's say, uh, 15 points. For one publication, it's, let's say, 5 or 10 points. One might go for three publications because if you sum it up, it's, it's still easier than uh, to have one patent. But you are true, you are correct, that uh, we need even to change now the uh, point system that more should be given to those commercialized, those adaptive technologies, rather than publication. Maybe uh, we can put more, put more points on, on, on those uh, commercialized products, patented product or patented outputs. Okay, wow. Thank you, sir. Ha? Um, meron na kaagad. So... Any other questions? Yun yung mga nakaroon ko lang po dito, ha? Market-driven din daw, sabi ni Mr. Art Barria. 
Sabi ni Sir Molina, research in SUCs, I believe, are more of supply-oriented rather than demand-oriented. Kung anong scientific strength ng university, yun ang ginagawa. May comment po ba doon? Uh, uh, excuse me, excuse me, before you can comment on that, I'm just Molina, I used to be also in the academy and uh, in the R4D sector with CJIR. I'm not even, Mr. President, I'm telling you, I'm not even thinking of patent as an output. I'm thinking of technologies, that tools that can be used by end users, not the patented. In fact, I don't believe in patent. It will only hinder the upscaling of technologies to the farmers, especially the kind of research that you are doing. Now, if you are doing genetic engineering, identifying genes, etc., yes, you might need patent. But if you are talking about uh, how to use cassava, bananas, those are not patented. You don't need patent. What you need is a technology that is useful to the farmers and to the end users. So uh, I'm not thinking of patent, uh, President Tonkili. Uh, Mr. Gas, I believe in you. I, I, I do believe it depends on the research outputs. Yeah. Okay. Ito pa, sir, isang comment. We have to further involve the private sector, consumers, farmers, early on. Thinking out of the box. Alam mo, Art, um, dapat talaga mag out of the box sa kami sa bar. <laughs> Di ba, sir, Gas? Dapat yung aming gagawin eh. Iniisip namin yung makikinabang na kaagad eh. Proponent na siya, hindi siya yung uh, wait, parang bride waiting to be, you know, no? parang <laughs> waiting to be the next bride, hindi. Uh, sige, um, maganda to, uh, gagawin po namin to sa bar. Congratulations and thank you very much for holding this great symposium. Very informative. Nakatuwa uh, daw. But to me, it's not only thinking outside the box. It's even thinking, including the box. Oh yes, oh. we expand and we got out of the box. <laughs> Most graduates of agri and fishery courses intend to seek employment either in government. Ah, oh, nga naman. Siguro nga, no, no? We, we, we produce graduates who are job seekers. We do not reduce gov uh, graduates to maging job provider. Ewan ko lang ina-cert yun, so sa akin, Sir Ed Tudin. Kasi sila'y nasa akadim. Uh, for job providers, maybe that will be responded by our entrepreneurship or technopreneurship programs where we are now teaching our students to become startups that may be three to five years after graduation. They can produce their own uh, micro companies that they provide uh, employment. That's now how we revise or are uh, our curriculum in the universities. Oh, our okay. students now are uh, teaching entrepreneurship or technopreneurship. Ah, technopreneur at saka entrepreneur. May, may I add? May I add? I think uh, uh, the mindset of majority of our students are actually on as employees, you know, as job seekers. And then, so I think it's time also for them to change this, this, this kind of mindset that if we aim for uh, to become employers, then uh, we should do that also from the level of uh, uh, their training in the university. Okay, thank you, sir. Sabi dito, yung agrarian, the Department of Agrarian Reform is giving land to our agri students who graduated. Can we also propose that agrarian reform can give lands uh, to small SUCs who lack areas whereby there's formal compliance for a cooperation to having MOVA with other agencies? Ah, ganun pala ang nangyari. <laughs> No comment. We cannot, oh, we cannot okay. answer. Oh, Maybe oh. Dark can answer. <laughs> Sabi nito, oh. Uh, ano to? to all speakers, given that SUCs have these agri-fishery programs and projects with various institutions, kumusta naman po ang participate, par participation, feedbacks, and reactions from the students? How participative, how participative are they? Uh, is there anything that DA can or should do to help encourage the youth to take part in this SUC initiatives? Uh, sa, pre, sa mga presidente muna sasagot. Um, <laughs> sa DA, ginawa namin yung Maya program, immersion. Pero sa DA offices, 
Uh, I just don't know, but ito yung immersion program ang pinag-uusapan dito. Ewan ko lang po sa mga akadim, sa akadim ngayon. You know how these technologies are generated. Of course, when the, your faculty member or researcher make these projects, uh, of course the projects, uh, some of these projects are actually being worked out by students in a form of uh, uh, thesis work, in a form of uh, the the laboratory exercises that we do oh, so th there's a the interface between research and instruction are actually in the in the in this kind of setup so the students will still get the benefit out of this setup when the faculty is actually getting a project or something and the output of this project of course is maybe in the form of technology or uh, agricultural use technology, food product, etc. But still, we see to it that uh, we use this in our instruction, we use this in their thesis, or we use this in their OJT requirements. Okay. Okay, report ko lang. Dito sa Quezon City, it's raining cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Oo. With the pilot, oh, sabi ni Sir Lapitan, with the pilot implementation of the PAFES, province-led agro and fisher extension system, SUCs will have an excellent partnership platform to be actively involved in DNLGU agri aqua programs. Mm -hmm. SUCs are in the best position to be a very important contributor to the local area transformation. So new challenge po ito sa inyo, sir. Yes, mm -hmm. that's highly welcome. Good development. Mm -hmm. eh, sir, matanong ko lang. Bigla ako nagtanong, ano? Paano apektuhan nga pala mga SU system Mandanas ruling? Exempted ba kayo doon? No. <laughs> Actually, we are not exempted. We are we are part of it. The puppet ah. is being piloted in provinces are actually in joining SUCs. And I know and I believe, or we believe, that SUCs are critical partners in this puppet system, part of the Mandanas ruling. Ah, ganun. So yung Mandanas may Pavis element. Then ano ho? True. So actually they are complementing each other actually. Oh, we will, so mga ano tayo we will tapos yung DA naman magde-devolve ng kanilang some other functions, no? Parang ang saya-saya. Doon sa plano nga ng PAC ng Mandanas nakita namin doon sa DBM memo sa amin. Parang the start of the implementation is in January 2025. Mm. Pero, pero ibig sabihin nun, ngayon pa lang 2022, yung budget namin binire-restructure na uh, as affected by Mandanas. Um, tapos yung, meron pa yung parang pinakamalaki doon, yung paano tatanggapin ng local yung functions ng national. Parang masaya. <laughs> yeah, you know, Mandanas is my governor. In yes, sir. Opo, naging guest nga namin si, si Governor Mandanas at pre-resent niya yan noong aming uh, National Food Security Summit. Okay, so maraming maraming salamat po. Uh, Don't join. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Mary Ann, sayo clear. Uh, yes, Ms. Mary Ann. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Oo, oh, oh, didiretsuhin ko na, no? Uh, uh, good afternoon uh, sa ating mga ano, esteemed resource persons. Thank you so much. Uh, now I get to know better no, yung ginagawa ng ating SUCs. May tanong lang ako sa inyo, are there already examples of licensing agreements between uh, the SUCs and private seed companies as far as new new varieties of, uh, no, of plants? Uh, yeah, yung may licensing agreements na ba? Uh... I have yet to ascertain in our IP office, but uh, actually, uh, we also have... Mga kasaba varieties ninyo, halimbawa. Yes. yes. And then, yes. kasaba varieties ng DSU eh. Yes, we have dispersed already our, ano, our, for our seed system for sweet potato and cassava. We have dispersed that across the country, ano. So, libre na siya. Yeah. Well, di, um, parang we need yun na yung IP. Yes. Parang, sige na, all yes, na to. Yes. It's already there. Ah. And, uh, ano na. Uh -huh, okay. very minimum cost because of the transport, so on and so forth. No? Okay. Pero yung, bawang kaya ng, yung bawang ng MMS. Yeah. Kasi sila, Ma'am Mary Ann, seed company. Meron yeah. silang plant R4D. Pero parang mm -hmm. sa Pilipinas, ay kakaun, parang hindi pa sila masyado ko, interested o wala pang masyadong usapin dun sa 
mga university bred varieties na mm-hmm. pwedeng i-license o whatever it is Uh-oh. sa mga seed companies Uh-oh. natin. Yeah. Oh, I asked this kasi ano, oh, ngayon meron kami ng ano, one licensing agreement that's with UC Los Banyos. Oh, yung Sinta Papaya, no, we give them royalty ni tala, mm-hmm. ano de payment. Kaya sabi ko baka and that's a very good ano, income generating uh initiative no or project for SUC. So, I was just thinking kung baka yung meron ng ibang ganong uh, are there available uh um uh products or or varieties that could be uh licensed by ano uh, by the private seed companies mm. through a licensing agreement yon hindi natin ang mga kasi ang UPLB meron silang mga bagong hybrid na talong eh mm I, I really don't know uh siguro mo okay. ano baka hindi lang masyadong napo-promote nila oo oh, oh. Uh-oh. Or, Uh-oh. mas maganda yeah. na bibreed din yun kaysa sa, um, kaysa sa government. Ay, ano yung intriga? <laughs> <laughs> Hindi naman. Of course, ang dami rin strengths ng mga, ano, may kanya-kanyang, ano yun, specialization. But, oh, oh okay. On on another note, ang, uh, ang daming ginagawa pala ng mga SUCs. Ang, ang ano ko lang, how can we, ano, disseminate this information better? Lalo na sa mga private seed companies or in the private sector. Kasi na, maganda yung ginagawa pero parang hindi alam kung baga we, we, we don't have that information. Dito lang kayo nagkatagpo ma'am ano? Kasi eh, buo ito ng mga SUCs eh. Yeah. O, ayan okay. sir ha, mga ah, ano to, potential partnership with the, with the private na to. Oo, exactly. Alam <laughs> ko kasi, no? ang alam ko ang DOST for example has a handbook of all DOST generated technologies. Meron talaga silang handbook. Uh, ito namang for specific for agriculture, uh, mag, nagko-compile pa kami pero we have not produced a, uh, a material for, but anytime, ano naman yung mga universities, they can really, uh, kasi part naman din yan sa aming promotion to actually also disseminate all this information to the public. Hmm. Okay. So, Thank you, Dr. Choi. Yes, ma'am. Salamat din po. Salamat, oh. ma'am. Salamat yes. po sa atin. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am. So, we'll be, uh, we'll be done in five minutes, ano? And, uh, ang sarap ng kwentuhan. I think this is one of the fora na naatirang ko na ang sarap ng kwentuhan. Ang, <laughs> kasi siguro parang sabi ko ang kanil sa private chat na ako sa bar, parang bar ang nakinabang. <laughs> Maraming wake up call sa amin. O Marvin, tuloy mo na at um, baka bumaha na rito sa atin. <laughs> yes po, sir. I think we can entertain one last question po. Okay, sige. Before we proceed. Pero wala na akong nakikita dito, mga comments ang magaganda na uh, lang. Si Ma'am oh. Virginia Cardenas po. Hello, Ma'am Virginia. Hi, hi, Choi, and hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Before you leave me out, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought you were not going to ask me anymore, so I, I left some some of my thoughts in the chat box. But since know, you already but have asked me, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. First, uh, let me congratulate si Dr. Tulin and Dr. Runkilio for their very impressive, very informative, and comprehensive presentations. Uh, congratulations. Um, uh, Ang, ang gandang mapakinggan lahat kasi nakita natin what the SUCs are doing are doing and how they are advancing the cost of the SUCs in getting mainstream to the modernization, professionalization, and the industrialization as pillars of uh, the transformation of Philippine agriculture. Meron lang ho, ako gusto malaman po kung um, is there any initiative of the SUC uh, I mean, of the SUs uh, and the ACAP, uh, in terms of looking at the labor market, mm. the labor market, kasi napaka-importante po rin sa atin sa SUCs, if we have a good view and understanding of the labor market because of its implications to our curriculum review and development. Most okay. especially now that... Um, 
everybody is talking about the fourth industrial revolution and everybody is talking about the fusion of uh, artificial intelligence and all those other um, technologies physical technologies plus the the intervention of uh, humanity kaya may eth ethics na rin na pinag-uusapan doon but you know having said those gusto ko sana malaman to what extent we have uh, look into the labor market and how we can adjust or improve our curriculum in agriculture particularly the formation of our agriculture educators in such a way that we are we can reposition ag uh, our agriculture education to meet the needs of uh, this new new uh, of this new future particularly as in the first uh, industrial revolution because um, if you are going to reposition for the future dapat alam din na rin natin kung ano yung needs of uh, the labor market particularly in the asean region kasi alam ni dr tulin ito we are working on the philippine qualifications framework for agriculture so that we can have our graduates uh, more employable and competitive in the ASEAN region. So I think we should be able to see what's going on and uh, let this be incorporated into our curriculum. So yun lang po. Thank you very much. Okay. Magko-comment po ba kayo? Feeling ko kasi tina, sinagot na naman Virgin yung tanong niya eh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, po, understanding the labor market. Okay. Understanding labor market is actually a topic, actually a topic in our uh, subjects in any in uh, curriculum in agriculture. Not only in agriculture, even other programs. We need to understand the entire supply chain, our position in the supply chain. And we have to really understand the labor market. That's why when we develop a product, we have to have market validation. Otherwise, our technology will, will be out. Tama po kayo, uh, Dr. Cardenas. Uh, we need to teach our students. And even our faculty, you know, if our students will navigate from the internet, all is in the internet, the labor market, the supply chain, we just need to direct our students and our faculty at the same time. But there's no need to revise the curriculum just for one to understand labor market. It's, it's a, a topic, maybe part of current events, updating of teachers and faculty to fully understand what should be thought in the classroom so that the product, Tamo Po Kayo, is synergizing with the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, I don't know if it's really uh, sad to say that we are teaching a fourth industrial revolution in a third industrial uh, revolution <laughs> environment. Country. No? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We, we easily say fourth industrial revolution, but look at mm -hmm. our environment. It is really fourth industrial setting. Uh, how about the resources that we are pouring in? So we have to check. It should be an entire system, not only SUCs, but the entire in the entirety of the, even our industries. How are we? sure that industries are 4.0 uh, we are not sure that even industries are 4.0 they're expecting that SUC to become 4.0 but even industries and and, and some processes no outside SUCs in the alam kung industry 4.0 or industry 0.4 <laughs> that's true but i think there is a need to reposition and prepare for that okay thank you ma'am virgie and now, last na magko-comment, uh, markata din ni oh. Mang Virgie, kumukulog dito sa tabi ko. Si yes, Dr. Ranyo lang. Hello, sir. Dr. Ranyo lang, sabi niya, pwede pa mag-comment? Okay po. Sir Ranyo lang, nasa na kayo? Sir Ranyo lang? Uh, nawala na, sir, Bert. Ano, no, na, pero basahin ko na lang comment niya, ha? Merong comment si Sir Ranyo lang, eh. Ang sabi niya ay, if there, is there an initiative from SUCs to link with the private investors at the start of the technology development rather than at the end? Ano discuss natin ito kanina? O sige po, um, sagot po ang ating mga university presidents. Yes po, the answer is yes. We have a lot of initiatives to really link with the private uh, investors. Just to check, alam mo ninyo ang isang product bago makomersalize yan. Ang dami ng stages niyan. And we believe that from the very start, industry or the private counterparts should be consulted. And we have a lot of initiatives uh, on that respect po. 
Salamat po. Okay, Marvin, the floor is yours. Ngayon pala, the wall is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much po again to our speakers. So now po, before we proceed to the next part of the program, uh, we will be awarding certificates of appreciation to our dear speakers po. Ceremonial po ito. So allow me to read the contents of the certificate. The certificate of appreciation is awarded to Dr. Tirso A. Rontillo, President, Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, for serving as a valuable resource speaker during the advancing innovations in science-based farm production systems, the role of state universities and colleges in modernizing, industrializing, and professionalizing Philippine Agriculture Food Systems Online Symposium. Held on the 6th of July, 2021, given the 6th of July, 2021 at Diliman, Quezon City, Philippines. So, signed po yan by Dr. Vivencio Arma Maril, our Director, Bureau of Agricultural Research of the Department of Agriculture. And uh, Secretary William D. Dar, Agriculture Secretary and Under Secretary Under Secretary Sec Secretary for Policy and Planning of the Department of Agriculture, New Secretary for Ibasera. So, let's give a round a warm round of applause to Dr. Edgardo, uh, to Dr. Tirso Aaron Kilio. So next po. The Certificate of Appreciation is awarded to Dr. Edgardo E. Tulin, President, State Universities and Colleges, Association of Colleges of Agriculture in the Philippines, for serving as a valuable resource speaker during the Advancing Innovations and Science-Based Farm Production Systems, the role of state universities and colleges in modernizing, industrializing, and professionalizing Philippine agriculture, Food Systems Online Symposium, given the 6th of July, 2021 at Tiliman, Quezon City. So, signed by Dr. Rivencio Arma Maril, Secretary William Dar, and New Secretary Dolfo B. Becerra. So, round of applause then po for, doc for Dr. Tulin. So, thank you so much po again for sharing your uh, wisdom to our participants here on WebEx and also live on Facebook. So, for the next part of the program, may I call on our director at at the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, uh, for the ways forward and also for the closing message, Dr. Vivencio R. Mamaril. Please. Hello, everyone. Okay. Hello, everyone. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Um, I think this is one of the fora na we really enjoyed, na nuna from our end. Kung mababasa ko lang, kung pwede ko lang basahin sa inyo yung mga private chats among the division chiefs and dito sa sa amin sa bar parang kami mag-move forward <laughs> on matters of R4D framework namin na yung bang yung sabi nga yung techno user ba ay nasaan nasa simula o nasa dulo parang nakara naka gawian na namin na nakalagay doon yung nakalagay lang namin kasi uh, uh, yung tatawag na potential beneficiary so yun naman proponent, ilalagay niya kung sino yung beneficiary na po pwedeng makinabang. And these are mostly hypothetical. So siguro it's about time to shift it, ano? Na yung aming beneficiary becomes one of the proponents. Para hindi na, hindi ka na naghihintay kasama kang magtatrabaho dun sa technology na gagamitin mo. And I think ita, isa ito sa mga move forward namin. So to last, um, hindi ko na pahabayan ito. I'm very happy with the participation of most of you. Napaka-positive na mga feedbacks dito. Uh, meron nga lang mga konting hinahin sa buhay. Tulungan nyo naman po kami na mapadali ang renewal ng aming mga PRC licenses sa PRC. O meron mga ganung hugot dito, no? Pero nakakatuwa and malaki utang na loob namin kay uh, President Tulin and President Ronquillo, pagka Batanggay nyo, Bigotillo. <laughs> na on a very short notice, kami po ay napagbigyan ninyo. At maraming salamat po sa inyo, Dr. Virgie, kay Art, kay Dr. Gas Molina, kay Sir Raniola, at yung ibang hindi ko nabasa ang mga pangalan. Um... May naglalay dito, Doc Choi, masaya ako na bar is moving out of its shell. Hindi <laughs> ko sabi kung sino nagsabi. Naka-private po yun sa akin. So maraming salamat po sa inyo lahat. Have a nice day ahead. It's raining cats and dogs na dito with matching ulan, uh, ulog at kidlat. 
Maraming salamat po. Yung 